Hello, this is Reed from the M&A Engineers. We are here today to give you a series of videos with real life explanations to shortcut your way to understanding the equipments that you use and design with every day. If you have not watched our MCCB video, I would suggest that you watch it before watching this video because ACB is basically a bigger version of MCCB with far more features. I have added the link to the MCCB video in the description below. In this video, we are going to give you an introduction on what is an ACB. Do like and subscribe to our channel if you like to learn more. First up, what is an ACB? The full term of an ACB is Air Circuit Breaker. It is of course insulated by the means of air. An ACB can be used to open and close a circuit just like a switch. Additionally, on top of a switch, it can monitor the amount of current passing through it and trip according to the settings. An ACB is usually used for 800 amps to 6300 amps. It is usually located in the main incoming and bus tie of a LV switch port. It may also be used as a feeder to your motor control center MCC panels. Do take note that ACB is usually used in 380 volts AC to 690 volts AC applications. Let me share with you the two main configurations of an ACB. An ACB can either be withdrawable or fixed. A withdrawable ACB comes with a chassis. The chassis is then connected to the bus bars. This allows the ACB to be withdrawn easily for maintenance and replacement. A fixed ACB does not come with a chassis. Therefore, maintenance can only be done with a full shutdown. In order to replace an ACB, a major shutdown of at least 1-2 to two days will be required. Hence, for our pro tip number 1 today, it is recommended that if your loads are critical, please select a withdrawable ACB. Typically, an ACB comes in 3 different sizes. As you can see, the 3 different frame sizes have different dimensions. And of course, the bigger the amps, the bigger the size. You are able to change the ampere trip of the circuit breaker via the settings on the trip unit. The ACB trip unit comes with LSIG features just like the MCCB. And with technological advancements, manufacturers like ABB, Siemens and Schneider has come out with electronic trip units that has far supersede their deep switch predecessor Trip unit comes with features like runtime monitoring, load profile analyzing, class 1 power monitoring, energy reduction maintenance settings, ERMS, where activated for maintenance, it automatically lowers the IN of the ACB to a lower trip setting. With great trip units come great communication protocols. Electronic trip units are able to communicate to your PMS, SCADAR, EPMS, BMS, BAS, basically all your edge control layers with the information collected using their advanced sensors. Common protocols such as Modbus TCP IP, Modbus RTU, Profibus and IEC 61850 are available for your selection. For your pro tip number 2, always check and specify a common protocol used for the edge control layer to your ACB and other equipments. The less protocol you have, the less mistakes you make. Next, how do you operate an ACB? Firstly, you need to know that an ACB has three main positions. The positions are closed position, open position, and trip position. So how do we operate an ACB when it's off or opened? Number one, check whether the spring has been charged. If yes, you may proceed to close the circuit breaker if conditions are safe. If the spring is not charged, you may then proceed to charge the spring handle, then close the circuit breaker. Let's stop here for a little moment and let me explain why the spring charging is needed. We are dealing with extremely high currents when operating an ACB. To put it in context, the 1000 amps, which is rather small when we talk about an ACB, is enough to power up a whole residential building easily. Therefore, the action of connecting or closing the circuit or even turning on the circuit will need to be fast, strong 
and consistent every single time. Reason being, whenever we close a circuit breaker, there will be an arc happening due to the large current flowing through. An ACB is built to withstand it. Therefore, the shorter or faster the closing action, the less chance that there will be a bad arc happening. After the ACB is closed or on, optional step is that you may charge the spring handle again to prepare for the next closure. Number 5. To open or close the ACB, simply press the OFF button. Do note that there will be a big bang when operating the ACB open, close or trip features due to the fast mechanical operations. Next, the accessories. Let me just highlight the top 5 that I will definitely use. Number 1. Motor mechanism. Number 2. UVT. Under voltage trip. Number 3. Shunt trip. Number 4. Auxiliary contact. And last but not least. Number 5. The communication module. Number 1. Motor mechanism. Remember having to crank the spring charging handle just to turn it off or on again. The ACB can be fitted with motor mechanism. The motor mechanism will be able to charge the spring automatically. With this, the operator do not need to charge the handle in front of the switch gear. The key advantage is safety and remote operations. With remote operation, once the spring is discharged, it will automatically recharge the spring and ready the ACB for its next operation sequence. Without this feature, it will be very difficult to remotely control the ACB. The motor mechanism operates usually on a redundant external power supply. It may be 220 volts AC, 24 volts DC, or even 110 volts DC. Please do not specify anything else. It's just not practical. The UVT under voltage trip trips the circuit breaker when there is a dip in voltage, typically below 50% of the rated voltage. This coil shall always be energized with the same source where the ACB is drawing power from. It also triggers the alarm contact when tripped. The UVT also prohibits the closing of a circuit breaker when there is an absence of voltage. Shunt trip coil, very much like the UVT, is a contact that simply trips the circuit breaker when activated. This trip is usually connected to an external protection relay as an backup, overcurrent or a foot protection. For most cases, it also triggers the alarm contact. Auxiliary contact is the contact that shows the status of an ACB, mainly on, off or trip status. These signals are usually given in dry contacts form where you can connect to the indication light of the LV switch gears. Lastly, the communication modules. Communication modules are able to send out native information that the trip units has collected like the ACB status, trip reasons, load profile, number of operations and so on with high level interface like Modbus TCP IP, Modbus RTU, Profibus and IEC 61850. Finally, as in conclusion for today's video, how do we select an ACB? We select an ACB by the following features that we have learned. Number 1, current rating. Number 2, the braking capacity. Number 3, the rated voltage. Number 4, whether it's a fixed or withdrawable ACB. Number 5, the trip unit required, LSI or G. Last but not least, by the communications requirement. We hope that you liked this week's video on ACB. This video takes a long time to create, so I hope that you guys can help me like and subscribe so more people can benefit from this video. Don't forget to leave a comment below if you have any questions. Once again, hope you enjoyed this video and see you guys next week.